Beautiful. Marta's here from British Columbia. Today I'm feeling really good. Energy is rising. I, as you are on day four of your bleed. Awesome. We're going to have a chance to talk about where we're at in our cycle in this webinar as well. So welcome, Marta. Happy moon time. And we've got Sahara is from Georgia. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm just gonna give it another moment here as we get ready. Let's see, Anna, Sophia, loving the painting behind you. The goddess says, yes, oh, this is wisdom of the ages. I love this, autumn sky art. I got this um, originally for the red tents that I was leading and I would put that up in our red tents just to remind ourselves the cycles of womanhood. Brittany is from Fairbanks. Hi, Brittany. She's excited for a beautiful sunny spring day with only a little bit of snow left on the ground. That's amazing. Is that early for Alaska? That's incredible. It's only April. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes here, letting us get settled. If you'd like, you can take a sip of your elixir and we're gonna have a ritual towards the end of this ceremony. So save a couple sips for the end, but uh, if you'd like, you can start to sip your delicious elixir. And in a minute, I'm gonna wanna hear which ones that you made if you ended up making one of the recipes. Lulu is here, she is feeling inspired, inspired by, by me. I just saw your video of the invitation on Facebook for this webinar and I grabbed a bunch of Brazil, Brazil nuts and now I'm here. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that um, you grab Brazil nuts because, you know, it, even if we're not having our Brazil nuts in an elixir, even if we're just eating Brazil nuts by themselves, so good for the thyroid, so good for adding selenium to the body. We need selenium for a healthy thyroid so that we're not going into low thyroid or autoimmune issues of thyroid like Hashimoto's. So grateful to hear that you grabbed some Brazil nuts. That's amazing. And... Let's see, I'm just gonna give it one more minute. So everyone just take a few breaths, getting comfortable in your seat. And also just wanted to share that if you stay till the end of the webinar, which it will be about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, one of you may get to win these Love Tonic Womb Herbs, which I just love. They, um, they're adaptogenic herbs that are good for hormone balance. And <clears throat> I put these in my elixirs. I put this in my cacao elixir, the one that I'm drinking today. It's in my recipe, as well as I love putting it in my smoothies. And yeah, uh, so good for adrenal health, really good for uh, the skin, hair, and nails. A lot of the different adaptogenic herbs in here I'll be talking about a little bit later today. All right. And welcome anyone who's new. If you want to share what your name is, where you're from, how you're feeling today, we're going to get started in just a second. I had a question, so I'm answering this real quick. Mary is here from California. Anna is saying, hope you come to Sweden soon. We have a lot of priestesses who work with a goddess. Oh, thank you, love. Yeah, and I'm based out of Ashland, Oregon. So um, there's a goddess temple here too. So I hope that you all get to come to the West Coast potentially and check out the goddess temple here. It's, it's beautiful. And it's on um, hot spring grounds where there's hot spring mineral water. So um, after the goddess temple connecting there. I love to, to soak in the hot springs. And Vida is here from Qatar. Did I spell that correct? All right. So again, we're gonna get started in just a second. And Taylor, I just saw your comment. Did it post to let me know if it went live? I think it did. Okay, great. So let's get started, beloveds. I'm gonna share my screen and please let me know <clears throat> if, 
if you can. All right, let me know in the chat box if you can see my screen as I pull this webinar up. So if you can see it, you can type yes in the chat box. I'm seeing, see, I'm seeing a yes. Okay, so the Rooted Feminine Masterclass. This is something that I wanted to share with you all because a few reasons actually, and I'll get into this in just a little bit, what's going on astrologically, what's going on in the seasonal shifts that we're going through. But this is a time where I've noticed a lot of us creative souls, um, creatrixes who are on a divine path to share their soul gifts into the world, are feeling perhaps challenges around maintaining sovereignty. And this is a theme going on collectively right now. So I felt called to share this masterclass on diving into our sovereignty journey deeper and being in our rooted feminine, being in a space that we feel so grounded that we are operating from within and not being pulled by all the distractions of what potentially is somebody else's truth and potentially signing up for things that aren't in, a full, aren't in full alignment with what our juicy yeses are. So then we get overcommitted, we get burned out, we go to food to help us have energy and we get emotional eating cravings. And so this masterclass is to help us reclaim our sovereignty in all those pieces, whether it's relationships, our work life, and our connection to food. So I do hope that you receive a lot of nuggets of wisdom and this is gonna be interactive. So throughout the webinar, I'm gonna be asking you questions and you're welcome to uh, comment and share yourself. I really do hope that you feel that this is a safe space for you to be authentically you. As we go through life, it is so easy to put on a mask as we show up and not feel truly seen because perhaps we fear that that person won't really understand us, you know, if we're really in our um, speaking our spiritual self and communicating from that space, we may be perceived as too woo. So we shut down the way we communicate to our family. We shut down the way we communicate to certain people in our lives. And we put on these masks thinking we need to show up a certain way. So I just want to say, let's just allow ourselves to energetically take off those masks, release, release that needing to be a certain way, needing to fulfill another's expectation of how we need to show up. And let's just take a breath into that. <sighs> and know that you are truly welcome as yourself here because your radical, authentic self is your key to sovereignty. And today we're going to explore the concepts of the menstrual cycle and how to really truly understand yourself and understand your blueprint of your fluctuating hormones so that you can show up as this radical authentic self of you in all that you're doing and utilize your menstrual cycle to plan your schedule, to communicate at certain times of the month, to work with your body and your hormones around certain foods that you need because we get certain cravings at, at different times of the month because we need certain nutrients for our hormone fluctuations. So I hope that you'll feel that you have a bit of a more understanding of your blueprint as you leave this webinar. All right, so again, welcome. This webinar is intended to be like a red tent. If any of you haven't been into a red tent or woman's circle, uh, these are ceremonies that I help to host that are a space where we can come and truly feel seen and not be coached unless we want to be coached, but more so tune into our inner wisdom and speak from that space, speak our emotions, speak our stories, speak our challenges, speak our celebrations. This is the whole role of the sisterhood sharing is not to fix each other's problems, but to share. And then as we all share and practice that sacred listening and witnessing, 
we hear bits of ourself and everybody's story. We have aha moments listening to everyone else. Plus, we truly get to the space to feel seen and feel heard. So again, I hope that you feel um, that this is a safe space to share what's on your mind, to share how you're feeling. And so we'll have a ritual later today with our elixir that perhaps that you made, and we'll have some time to share authentically what's been going on. So our webinar flow, again, we're going to be diving deep into the concept of reclaiming sovereignty. We're going to be discussing the menstrual cycle. We're going to get kind of into some science. So if this is too much for you, don't worry. This today's webinar is a um, it's a celebration of temple doors opening for goddess and rhythm. That is a, a whole lunar cycle program that starts on the new moon in Taurus, which is May 4th, where we deep dive into the menstrual cycle. So if this is all like too much for you, don't worry. There's another chance that you can dive even further into this and working through it in a whole month time period. But for now, I'm going to share with you a hormonal science transmission. I kind of get geeked out on hormone health and I hope that you will jive with it. I will do my best to explain it in terms that you can relate if this information is new to you. Also, we're going to talk about the three top sovereignty breakthroughs. So the blocks that we might experience that make us feel like we're in a cage and how to release ourselves with that from that by tuning into our menstrual cycle coming within in order to speak our truth and plan our schedules and connect with food in a different way and lastly we're going to have our elixir ceremony that's at the end and again i had mentioned these womb herbs that i have here my love tonic i love the stuff again i put it in my cacao elixir for your inner goddess i love putting it in smoothies this is something that I'm going to be giving away to one lucky winner at the end of this live webinar. So stay tuned. And you can also find this on my website as well. And these have different adaptogenic herbs like Lycium, which is goji berry, and um, it has shizandra berry. These are good for the adrenals, for the skin, the hair and nails. Soldiers used to, in ancient China used to bring these berries to the kings in honor of their queens and say, this is a gift to your queen. She's so beautiful. May she live for a, for a long time with great longevity and beauty. And they were known as beauty longevity herbs, and they help the adrenals. They help the kidneys. So... If you know that you're one person that is like on fire with your creativity and you have many roles that you're playing in life in this modern day uh, time, this is uh, supportive of your body. Plus there are hormone balancing herbs in here. So this is going to be given away to one lucky winner at the end and details to win will be shared at the end. I'll have a little challenge that you all get to do. So stay tuned for that. And so your elixirs, I would love to hear from you all. Did you make an elixir? If so, which one did you make? So um, I'm actually going to pull up the chat box. And if you feel like you would like to share which one that you're drinking today, if you're enjoying it, what you think about it, I'm gonna share a little bit about each elixir as you're typing. So the first one, this one is my cacao elixir for your inner goddess. I made this one about an hour ago while I was preparing. So I'm kind of drinking. I drank uh, quite a bit of it, but I'm going to be saving the last sips till the end so that we can have our, um, our food, um, releasing emotional eating and liberation from food cravings ceremony that we're going to have at the end. So this is the one that I made and I actually use ceremonial grade cacao that I get from my friends Firefly Cacao. If you're interested in ceremonial grade cacao and supporting indigenous communities, um, they Firefly Cacao goes directly to these farms in Guatemala and Belize and um, if you're interested in that, that is at, that is actually, there's a link in, in the recipe that you can click on. But you could also just use cacao paste that you get from the grocery store, from a health food store. I really like to use cacao paste rather than cacao powder because the paste has healthy fats in it. Cacao powder is just the fiber and the fat is left out. 
So you can still use cacao powder. I just love to add in the fat of the cacao too because it's creamier. It makes it like this nourishing, creamy, delicious yumminess. And I really feel like it's a treat. Plus it's filling. Fats that come from plants like cacao and coconut and um, different nuts and seeds, avocados, really good for healthy brain function and for hormone balance. Hormones are made from fat, from cholesterol. So healthy plants uh, can aid in hormone balance. So I love to add in cacao, uh, the cacao fat. So cacao butter, it's called, but you can just get cacao paste, which is both the fiber and the fat. And then also in this elixir, you'll see there's rose, which is one of the most high vibrational um, frequencies on this planet is the rose. And rose to me is just this beautiful unfolding of the, um, I see it as connection to the yoni, connection to the womb, because, you know, we have our thorns, we have our boundaries, we have the soul work that we are learning and being clear with our yeses and our noes. And then when we feel safe and we have the right nourishment, you know, the right food and pleasure and connection and intimacy, we can start to bud and we can start to blossom. And then as we blossom and open, we start to create our magic when we're really listening to the desires of our womb space, our sacral chakra, and hearing what those messages are of what we want to share in the world. And as the flower blooms, she's this beautiful rose, and she has a, an, a gorgeous aromatic smell. And I feel that that is such a beautiful representation of our sexual energy, our creative energy, our fertile energy. It's all connected. And so then a few more herbs in this drink. There are, um, I have hemp seeds, again, healthy fat, plus omega-3s and hemp seeds are great for reducing inflammation. So if you have terrible period cramps or, um, you know, migraines or things like that, omega-3s, more omega-3s in your diet can support an anti-inflammation response. And then there's shilajit in here, which is a adaptogenic herb that is high in fulvic acid, which fulvic, not folic, F-U-L-V-I-C, which helps the cells produce more energy. So I love to drink this when I just want a natural boost of energy. Plus the cacao is loaded in B vitamins. It's high in magnesium, which can reduce bloating and cramping. And it helps to release dopamine the feel good happiness neurotransmitter. So I chose cacao. I wanna hear what all of you else have chose. Let's see, I'm seeing Brittany has a matcha maca latte, yum. I'm seeing a mar, a hot green tea latte. Yes, the hot maca matcha. I'm gonna go into that one in just a second. Anna Sophia said, are we able to see this webinar afterwards? I need to leave soon. Um, most likely I'm gonna do the, a post a replay. Um, and so thank you so much for being with us currently, love. Sending you blessings. And Sahara is having a sacred cacao elixir. It's absolutely divine. I've used Firefly Cacao and it also. I love Jonas and his mission. Me too. Jonas is the owner of Firefly Cacao. He's an incredible human. I feel so in tune with my body and my energy is through the roof. I, I feel that from cacao. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yes. And so little words about the hot maca matcha latte. So maca is a root vegetable actually from Peru and it is crushed up. It's dehydrated and crushed up into a powder. So normally when you get maca at the health food store, you see it in a powder and it kind of has like a malty flavor to it. It's an interesting flavor. And I, I love it because it helps to increase stamina. Athletes will use it to help increase stamina, as well as it does help to use, um, it does help to increase the libido as well. So it can help with that. It can help with um, blood flow and circulation to our sexual organs. And there's actually studies that have been shown and done on men that show that it's basically nature's Viagra, that it works <laughs> up to par. So that is maca and it can be good for hormone balance. And again, this depends uh, what your relationship to your estrogen is. Uh, some women who have estrogen dominance 
cannot for some reason utilize and work with maca, um, it can have a different effect on the body. So it's just everyone is different and maca can be some of us who have hormonal issues. It can be um, a big support into regulating hormones because it helps the pituitary gland and hypothalamus, which is the control center in our brain that um, sends, receives and sends messages to our ovaries and tells us how much hormones to release each month, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. Uh, so it can help with building that connection and release the proper amounts of hormones but not everybody benefits from this. Again, if you have high estrogen and it, you have a difficult time metabolizing estrogen, this could potentially not be the herb for you, but it all depends. And just tune into your body as you connect with these herbs and notice the signs and symptoms you're experiencing. So that's maca. And I love to add matcha in the matcha because matcha is an antioxidant and it is more subtle than coffee. Coffee can really spike the blood sugar and cause cravings later because if our blood sugar spikes and then drops, we may get hungry later or feel crash and need more coffee. So I love using matcha as well as I love adding the healthy fats like coconut butter to the one that you just had. So to me, that is nourishment in the morning when I need a little pick me up. I go to my hot maca matcha latte. And then the last one is the Brazil nut milk with reishi and cardamom. So reishi is an adaptogenic herb. It's a mushroom and it's great for the immune system. It helps activate the heart energy and it um, helps us handle stress. So I love to add reishi into it or any of the mushroom powders, cordyceps, lion's mane, turkey tail, any of them. I'll just add it to the milk and you can't really taste it um, because I add, you know, the cardamom, which I, cardamom's an adaptogen as well. It can boost the libido. And then I use dates to sweeten it, which you could use stevia or monk fruit if you don't want to use dates. And if you've never made your own nut milk before, I highly recommend it. You can use almonds, you can use pumpkin seeds, you can use any kind, walnuts, any kind of nuts that you'd like. And basically you just need a paint strainer or a nut milk bag and you blend all the nuts up with water after you've, after you've soaked them overnight to help germinate them. And then you blend it and strain it through the nut milk bag. And then voila, you have your own nut milk, which is amazing because if you go to the store, it's pretty expensive and there's a lot of additional fillers in it. And if you don't want to get, you know, carrageen, which is known to be an uh, inflammatory um, filler that's in a lot of the milks to give it body. If you don't want to add in all this additional stuff with your nut milk, you can just make your own and it's so fun. Your kids will love it too because they can help you squeeze the nut milk bag. It can be a project for all of you together. Brittany just asked, what is the difference between coconut oil and coconut butter? Yeah, thank you so much for asking this. So coconut oil is when you t they take out the, um, the coconut meat. So inside the coconut, that white fleshy part, they take that out and they press it and they hopefully cold pressed, expeller pressed, unrefined. That's the best coconut. Um, oil when they, they don't heat it. And so they cold press it and then out comes the oil and then the fiber of the meat is left behind. The coconut butter has both the coconut meat fiber and the oil. So it's a bit thicker and it makes it creamier. And I personally, like I put it in my elixirs as well as I also just take it and I scoop some out and put it on top of a banana. It's so good. You can put it on top of, you know, pancakes if you make gluten-free pancakes which I have a delicious um, paleo pancake recipe on my YouTube. So I hope that helps love. So yeah, again, if you haven't tried any of these elixirs, I'm, the recipes are in your email. So feel free to make them and we are gonna move on to our masterclass. So let's see, where did my webinar PowerPoint go? Okay, can everybody still see this? Yes? So I didn't introduce myself. Maybe I should introduce myself. Hello, everybody. I am Allie McPhee. I am a women's health educator. I started off um, with my love affair with food and nutrition. I helped open a restaurant in Indianapolis, a fully uh, dairy-free and gluten-free cafe. 
And in that time period, I had, well, I had gotten off the birth control pill several years before that. I didn't have a period for two years. When I opened up the restaurant as head chef, my flow came back and I was on my period for two weeks every single month. Lots of brown, lots of exhaustion, lots of food cravings, emotions that I just couldn't handle and process, lots of stress, couldn't fall asleep at night. I had high cortisol. And then when I did get the red flow of my, of my period, it was super heavy, like a waterfall and exhausting. So for me, I went to plant-based sugar. You know, I didn't go to processed sugar, but I did go to plant-based sugar to give me energy. And what that did, you know, eating dates and maple syrup and all this deliciousness, it ended up burning me out even further. So two week long menstrual cycles, a lot of exhaustion. Eventually I resigned from that position to nurture my health and my love affair with food continued. Uh, after the OBGYN told me I had low progesterone, high testosterone, or high, um, low progesterone, high estrogen called estrogen dominance. I was told that I would need to take synthetic hormones at the age of 25 to balance my body. And I, I was like, no, like I, I want to figure out how I can do this with food. I want to figure out how I can balance my body with food. And I suspected at the time that my hormones were impacting the different nutritional requirements that I needed each month. And so I dove into that journey and learned how I could support my body with food, as well as rituals and really connecting with my inner divine feminine energy and realizing how much I was in my go, go, go in my masculine and how to really live more from a yin yang perspective in life with enough time to slow down, listen to my womb, listen to my creative desires, build a foundation of food that was going to be sustainable and give me long term energy and not just burn me out and cause me to crash later, as well as create a work life schedule that was in alignment with feeling like I had freedom as well as radiant health, uh, radiant health and Eventually what happened was my two week long periods decreased to three to five days. I don't experience any pain. I love menstruating. It is a sacred part of my cycle. If I do not take space and really connect with my body at that time, the whole rest of the month is not flowing as, um, as desirable. So today I'm going to share with you that blueprint. And um, after healing my own body, I just realized, and after telling my story and talking to so many women, that so many of us were experiencing the same thing, whether it was acne or terrible period pain or um, fibroids or having cysts or having thyroid issues and feeling exhausted and gaining weight and feeling cold hands and feet all the time. And I realized that there's such a huge need for this because we go to the doctor and then they tell us, well, here's the birth control pill or here is, you know, synthetic hormones. And so it is my mission to provide this education, which we did not receive in high school, so that we can truly work with our body and listen to our inner blueprint and know when we're fertile and we're not, and know how to support our fluctuating hormones with food and communicate to our lover and our family and create healthy boundaries and really honor this body, this vessel, this temple as a microcosm of earth, which is the macrocosm with seasons and moon phase movements and um, yeah, this, this cyclical rhythm. So we have cycles too. So that's who I am. And I teach this work through these online webinars that I do free master classes. I have two programs that I teach as well online, the goddess and rhythm program that I'm going to be sharing more about today, as well as the juicy feminine living online program that both of those I launch once a year and juicy feminine living is more of a deep dive into our sacred sexual energy and releasing trauma through the, uh, the healing sacred sexuality arts, like the Jade egg and Yoni massage and, um, um, goddess and rhythm is a deep dive into our loop. So this, this um, master class is all about the rooted feminine. So what do I mean when I'm talking about the rooted feminine? So let's think of the opposite of being rooted. It's being ungrounded, right? And you know, this is not something to ever shame ourselves about. This is not something to ever think that we're not good enough because we haven't mastered it. We are in a society right now that is super on the go, fast paced, 
there's distractions everywhere and it can be a challenge to come within and feel our rooted connection to spirits, whatever that is for you, your connection to the divine and to earth and to your cycles. We weren't taught this growing up, unless you had like a hippie mother or um, you know a mother who was a, a biology major and understood uh, hormone fluctuations. But for the most of us, we did not know this stuff. They didn't teach us this in high school in sex ed. I mean, at least for me, none of this was shared. So, you know, by we live in a world where this isn't part of our mainstream society and being creative souls and having a lot of ideas and excitement of things we want to create and birth in the world, it is vital and essential for us to be rooted or else we're up in the higher chakras receiving messages from the divine and it's like all the stuff we want to do but if we can't actually ground it down into our body and create a sustainable structure of our lives, then we'll have all these ideas, they'll just be flowing, and then we're never actually fully producing them. Or we're over committing to too many things and not being able to show up fully or having to let go of things last minute. Um, and also just a little bit about um, female energy versus male energy in Tantra. I've learned that male energy runs down and female energy naturally runs up. So being able to allow ourselves to root down and come into these lower chakras, our solar plexus, where we can store, you know, a lot of shame and fear to, um, really be confident stepping forward with our, um, with our creative goals, as well as our sacral chakra, which can hold, again, shame around sexuality, guilt, fear, and then our root chakra, which again is, is our survival, our fear. So when we get into these lower chakras and are being rooted, a lot we can feel around these emotions, which feels really dense and it can be quite hard to process. So there are ways that we can connect with this rooted feminine and i'm going to share the menstrual cycle blueprint with you to help you work with that to root yourself so when you know you're ungrounded and i'd love for you to just connect with these um with these words to see if any of this resonates with you so you know you're ungrounded when your thoughts are racing all over the place and it's hard to be fully clear and there's just so much going on in this monkey mind Perhaps you're having more accidents recently. You're breaking things by accident. You slam your hand in the door. I've definitely done that before. You're just going, going, and you're not really in your body. And things are kind of, you know, accidents are happening. You're feeling clumsy. You're knocking your knee on the, um, the corner as you walk by. You may have papers scattered all over the place on your desk and little sticky notes everywhere, and it's not organized. Uh, so disorganization, you're forgetting commitments or you're over committing and you have to take things off your schedule or you literally just forget to show up. Um, you're, you're having challenges communicating yourself. You don't really know what it is that you're feeling and needing. And so you're forgetting to communicate or you're just having a hard time and you're feeling blocked or you are um, going to food and perhaps eating too much of it, overeating, and feeling really emotional around food. These are all indications, clear um, experiences where you might be ungrounded. So as I said earlier in this webinar, why I feel that it's so important at this time to connect to this topic is because we were just in the full moon in Libra and Libra is all about relationships. And so as Libra is the scales balance, we are constantly flowing with this feeling of balance in life and within our relationships, being in balance with our relationships is to me, it's an understanding of um, really having ourselves feel open and compassionate to the other person we're speaking to. So sometimes we can try on another person's truth because we're listening, we're feeling open, we're connecting. Um, but what can happen is if we try on too many others' truths without really understanding and being clear with our own truth, 
we can start to operate from a place that is outside of ourself. We can start to operate from a place where we are living other people's truth and it may not be in full alignment with our own needs and our own beliefs. And so as we start to live life from that space, it can cause us to commit to things that aren't a full yes. And so then we put things on our schedule, we say yes to somebody, but it isn't a full in alignment with the other things that are on our schedule, our sacred goals that we've been working on. And that can cause challenges as well as if we feel we've lost touch with our inner truth and we're listening to another strong opinion about what, what diet is perfect to eat, you know, eat paleo 100%, eat raw food 100%. And we're neglecting our own body signs and we're um, not able to tap into the intuition of what is needed for us at that time. Again, this can cause imbalances because we're not working with our body. We're taking on an ideology and trying to meet it and we're losing sense of our own um, body temple wisdom and connection. And then lastly, I wanted to share this photo with you here. This is the maypole. So we just came out of the um, full moon in Libra, which is causing people to ask themselves, what is their personal truth versus um, those they're co-creating with? That's, that's sovereignty in relationships. And then now we're heading into Beltane, which is May 1st. This is the midpoint between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. And in Beltane, this is a traditional pagan holiday of celebrating fertility, celebrating fertility of the land and things awakening back from spring coming and the warm weather and coming into summer full expansion. So this is a time of sacred union. And I love to think about sacred union, not just with us and our beloved, but sacred union within, truly knowing thyself, understanding how our inner masculine shows up in the world and how our inner feminine shows up in the world, how they dance with each other, how they support each other, and coming into a place of personal responsibility. I feel that there's so much freedom in responsibility, showing up in life as how am I co-creating with others, not... I'm the victim, why is this happening to me? But how am I thinking and speaking and taking action that's co-creating this reality? And what is my personal responsibility in this? If I don't like what I'm seeing in front of me, how can I shift to release attachment to expectations and outcomes? And how can I ask myself, what's the medicine in this situation? How am I learning and growing? And if I desire to create a different story, how will I do that with new thoughts, with different actions, with speaking different, um, speaking a different story? Words are spells. So we're going to go into that in a little bit. But this is the time that we may all be feeling this, like this piece of sovereignty from Beltane coming up and the recent full moon. So sovereignty, I keep talking about this, is knowing your true self in your menstrual cycle because our hormones fluctuate throughout the month. So you may feel a certain way during one week and then the next week you may feel completely different. And if you don't know how your body's changing and it's a mystery and it's a surprise each week, then it's hard to plan our schedules. It's hard to communicate why we're showing up the way we are to others when we're in it. So the more that we are working with our menstrual cycle, that can create a lot of freedom in our life, freedom to express ourselves, to have more, um, our, more time. We can play, create more time on our schedules uh, at certain times of the month so that we can just be with the process that's occurring in our menstrual cycle, how we're feeling, usually towards the end of our luteal phase, the please make space of our cycle, as well as freedom from food cravings. This is another piece of sovereignty. You know, we can come into dependency around food and we can lose our personal power. We can become unconscious. When we're rushing mindlessly, go, go, going, and thinking that we have to do it all, sovereignty is releasing that default of overwhelm, overdoing, overgoing, overeating, and coming into the space of knowing where our clear intentions are, where we want to place our energy, being fully present when we're placing our energy in certain areas, and letting go trusting that it's not all up to us, that we are co-creating with the divine in every moment. And the more that we align 
with our intentions and align with the feeling of ease and peace and pleasure and expansion of feeling there is enough time, there's enough resources, there's enough of everything, this can put us into a state of flow that it's not all up to us, that it's not all our mind creating our rigid schedules, but this surrender that there is a stronger force that we are attuned to and we're working together. Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> that it's not all up to us? And then sovereignty is being able to feel liberated in our emotions. And anxiety is something that can actually come up um, during ovulation or towards the end of our luteal phase, which I'll explain in a little bit near our please make space PMS time of our month. And this can be due to an imbalance of estrogen and progesterone levels. So knowing how to support our hormones and work with our cycle can create freedom from certain emotional experiences that we may not have to go through. So this webinar, I hope that you walk away feeling more free, more free with having a container, having a responsibility to life to show up, but in that responsibility, in that container you're creating for yourself, feel massive freedom, right? Because freedom isn't fully like releasing all responsibilities and not showing up in life, I feel the more that we are feeling rooted in a container, the more that we can show up with ourselves and be in this, this flow of giving and receiving. So what keeps us caged? We've been talking about this quite a bit. Um, so relationship dynamics, you know, in certain relationships, we can start to express ourselves and get stuck in a certain way of relating, a pattern. So we're going to be looking at that today. These are the three main topics we're going to be looking at to reclaim sovereignty. And another feeling of caged energy could be the demands of an overwhelming work schedule or never feeling like we have enough time and there's so much going on. Emotional eating, that's the last one. And we're going to have our ceremony to liberate ourselves from emotional eating. So I want you to rise, goddess. I want you to feel in touch with your intuition, in touch with your sacral chakra. And when I talk about the sacral chakra, I often talk about the womb, whether you've had a hysterectomy or you, know, you have your womb, you don't have your womb, you have some of your ovaries or you don't, it does not matter. That energy of the divine feminine is there, no matter what. That creatrix energy is in your sacral chakra. So know that when I'm speaking about the womb, and speaking about your sacral, your sacral chakra. And this space of our body is essentially our connection to relationships. It's our connection to others in relationship to others, but really it's about the relationship to ourself and the relationship to the divine. And when we turn inward and when we listen inward to our yeses and our no's, and we know how to fluctuate with our inner cycle, our menstrual cycle, then we will see an impact on what we're experiencing in our outer relationships, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. So the solution, the rooted feminine, the menstrual cycle, I'm going to share with you your blueprint now. So here's where we get a little geeky, a little sciency and stick with me. So the hormone dance of our monthly cycle. This is a graph that I wanted to share with you here. And on this graph, there are three different pieces. On the top, you can see the follicle. This is, so your ovaries, which are um, on either side of your womb, your ovaries will release 10 or anywhere from 15, 10 to, to 20 eggs each month and they'll grow in the follicles on your ovaries. And then eventually one of them will become the most dominant and that egg will release, burst through the follicle when you are ovulating. So as you can see up here on top, this is the growing follicle. Here's the egg and the follicle is growing, releases during ovulation. And then I'll talk about what happens after ovulation to that follicle. And so this is the top and then the middle part this is our hormones, our shifting hormones. We're going to be talking about estrogen and progesterone today, as well as a little bit, of, we'll talk a little bit about uh, testosterone. And then down here, this is the uterine lining. So the here, as you can see, the uterine lining is shedding and it's building back up. And then at the very bottom, you'll see zero days up to 28 days. 
So this is a graph to kind of help you understand what's going on with your hormones each month. And I'm going to explain how long each phase of your menstrual cycle is, as well as how, is it, how it pertains to a specific season, like the earth goes through seasons and her cycles, we go through seasons, and what it's going to do to your energy levels, as well as your emotions, and a little bit about your cravings for food. <clears throat> so shall we dive in? Is everyone ready for this? If, if, if you feel ready, say yes in the chat box. Let me, let me hear a little love. <laughs> okay, so we're going to dive into day one. I'm seeing yeses. <laughs> I love you all. Okay, I, we're going to dive into day one. So day one is when you start bleeding. So, um, you know, this is for a typical menstrual cycle around 28 days. If you don't have a cycle um, and your body's still balancing, coming back into harmony, um, I, I just want to share this blueprint with you. And perhaps your cycle goes 34 days or maybe even longer than that. You know, if there is an imbalance, which can be a number of hormonal reasons why. Um, but I just wanted to share this blueprint with you. And I fully believe that we can, we can heal from within. I fully believe in your process. I fully believe in your journey. So I'm just giving this to you as a blueprint of what goes on in a typical 28 day menstrual cycle. So day one, we can track is when we start to bleed. And typically the menstrual flow should last anywhere from three to seven days. If it's only a day, that may be a sign of um, some estrogen imbalances, estrogen progesterone imbalances. And if it's longer than seven days, it can also be a sign of estrogen to progesterone imbalances. And so typically we want it around three to seven days and typically around three to five days. Seven is kind of a lot. Um, so if you have heavy waterfall menstrual flow every day for seven days, that could be, again, sign of an estrogen progesterone imbalance, estrogen dominance. And... Um, so, but if you've always had seven days and you feel great, your body feels amazing, then I would say, you know, tune into the way your body feels and, and probably that's not an issue if that's been like your long-term experience and you feel great. So the menstrual cycle, three to seven days. And in this time period, we are releasing the uterine lining. This is essentially a major contraction, a letting go. It's, it's a process of death and rebirth. We are letting go of what was inside us and it's passing through our cervix. And um, also our hormones are returning to a low level. So estrogen, progesterone, are going to go at the lowest level of our cycle at this time. So it is essentially a rebirth. It's a letting go and it's a rebirth and a lot is happening within our body. So it's so important to create space in our schedule to rest, or if you're busy, at least create space to slow down and also really honor this time. You know, this is what we dive deeper into goddess and rhythm, the emotional aspects of what society has fed us for decades around what the menstrual cycle means, which it's a curse. It slows us down. Here's some mitol, you know, drink some caffeine and espresso and show up smiley to work. Don't miss a beat. Keep going. Our society doesn't really honor the need for these cycles, the space, because we live in a very linear based you know, nine to five, these many days, weekend is off kind of routine. So it is up to us to change this by creating that space in our schedule. So if you are busy and you're traveling and you work a lot and you're a mom and you have kids and it's just, there's a lot going on, we can still carve out time knowing when we're going to menstruate and create that space in our schedule to slow down and to connect with our womb and see what comes up around the emotions are we frustrated that our bleed just came? Or once we start to bleed, do we say, oh my goddess, like welcome, welcome beautiful moon time. That's something that I had to work with for actually like a year, two years, was to release the frustration of my flow there because I was so busy as an entrepreneur and come to honor it as a sacred holy experience where I get to rebirth. So if we take the time in our menstrual phase to let go, surrender, and have pause, have spaciousness, 
then naturally, once we have space, new seeds of ideas can incubate into our consciousness. We can have these aha moments about what's working in our life, what's not working. And naturally, as we come out of our menstrual flow, as estrogen starts to rise, which we'll talk about in just a second, we'll start to have this new energy of where to place our attention. So it's literally like a death and rebirth where things that may not have been working the month ahead, if we take that, that pause, we may have epiphanies of what to let go of and where to fully place our attention. So as we're starting to create the next month ahead, we're clear with where to put our energy. So again, all hormones that are at a low level and because the hormones are low, also our right and he left hemisphere of the brain are more in sync. So it's just this time of surrender and clarity of this pause and this stillness where the epiphanies can come and that's where we can know how to, um, where to direct our energy in the upcoming month, where to direct our creative energy. So after we come out of menstruation and we release the uterine lining, after we stop bleeding, we enter into our follicular phase. So menstrual phase can be described as winter because in winter, you know, everything is, the leaves are barren um, from the trees. It's, it's cold. There's stillness. It's an introspective time. That's our menstruation. Then when we come out of winter, we're going into spring. This is our inner follicular phase. This can last from anywhere to three to eight days. It's different per each woman, depending on when you ovulate. Some women ovulate early and then get their period early, around 26 days. Some women ovulate later and then get their, their, men, their menses around day 30, day 32. It all depends on when you ovulate then, and I'll get into this in just a second, but follicular phase can, can fluctuate depending on when you end your menstrual cycle and when you start to ovulate. So this is our inner spring. Our estrogen starts to rise. It was low and now it's rising and estrogen is actually helping to build these follicles and eggs. The new eggs that could potentially be fertilized this month were released on the ovarian wall towards the end of our menstrual cycle and, or yes, towards the end of our menstrual phase. And then in our follicular phase, the rising estrogen is starting to build and nourish these follicles, as well as it's helping to build up the uterine tissues again. And estrogen is a hormone that can make us feel kind of flirty, um, pretty, uh, it can help us multitask, it can help our brains feel very creative with a lot of new ideas. So as estrogen starts to rise, you'll feel this new energy as well as new excitement to take on new things in your life. And then estrogen is going to peak around ovulation. Ovulation lasts for about three to four days. And how to know you're ovulating is by testing your cervical fluid. It's different than arousal fluid. We can have arousal fluid at any point of the month. Cervical fluid comes directly from inside the cervix out into the yoni, and it is only there for about three to five days. And this cervical fluid is a reflection of we're fertile. And if there is sperm present, the cervical fluid will nourish sperm and keep it alive so that when we release the egg, that sperm can come swim up and get the egg, uh, fertilize the egg. So we have cervical fluid when we're ovulating. And I teach all the fertility signs in Goddess and Rhythm to help you really understand. But that is like the peak of our cycle of expansive fertile energy, high libido. Also testosterone is high at this time of the month. So we have more energy. It's good to build muscle. Um, you know, if we have a workout routine as well as we have high sex drive, this is nature's way of helping us make a baby. So we also feel really expressive at this time of the month. And I'm going to get more into that in just a little bit. But at this time of the month, estrogen levels peak, testosterone levels peak. Also this hormone called the luteinizing hormone suddenly surges and peaks and that causes the egg to release from the follicle. Poof. And we've ovulated. This is related to the season of summer. Super fertile. The fruits are dropping from the trees. We are, it's baby making time. Most expansive energy. 
So now this is the phase that really comes into, um, it's really important to understand this phase, this next phase, because this is what we, this is where we may start to feel the food cravings and anxiety if there's not enough progesterone. So after we ovulate, um, again, ovulation is three to four days, we start to enter into our inner fall, our luteal phase. And the egg just bo boosted, Sorry, the egg just bursted from the follicle up here in this photo. And that follicle, the next picture you see this, this yellow follicle, that follicle, um, that it collapses on the ovarian wall. It gets a fancy term called corpus luteum, and this follicle starts to produce progesterone. So progesterone is needed during the luteal phase because if the egg got fertilized, it, um, and it implants into the uterine tissue, Progesterone is helping to thicken that tissue, which remember, estrogen's building the uterine lining. Progesterone thickens it and sustains it, keeps it strong, so that if that egg, fertilized egg, implanted, that it wouldn't be released in a miscarriage and that progesterone can help hold it. Also, progesterone is a hormone that helps to ground us. So remember this energy of autumn that we're in in our luteal phase. It's a grounding energy. And progesterone is a calming hormone. So we don't want to be feeling a lot of anxiety around this time. That's a sign of an imbalance. Progesterone is a calming hormone and it can help us get stuff done. It can help us ground and organize, really be in our rooted feminine. So the corpus luteum will continue to produce progesterone and continue if we got pregnant. And if we didn't get pregnant, our body will know that we didn't. And then the corpus luteum will start to disintegrate. And eventually as it disintegrates, progesterone levels will drop and that will signal our menstrual cycle to come around day 28. So the luteal phase is the longest phase. It lasts 10 to 14 days. And um, if you have a luteal phase longer than 14 days, 18 days, 20 days, 25 days, it most likely that means that you're pregnant. Um, but remember, ovulation can be postponed. If there's stress in your life or changes in diet or you're traveling, ovulation could be postponed a week or so later, and then your luteal phase is going to happen later, and then your menstrual phase is going to come later. So this all depends. Um, but typically, for a normal cycle, we ovulate around day 14, and then we get our bleed 10 to, 10 to 14 days later around day 28. And so progesterone levels, as you see in this photo, are climbing. Estrogen levels decrease. Testosterone levels should decrease as well. Estrogen will climb up back a little bit in mid luteal phase. But for the most part, we want to have high progesterone levels. And as we see up here, this body temperature graph, we have lower basal body temperature when we wake up in the morning, pre-ovulation, and then post-ovulation, we have higher. And that's because progesterone levels, um, they heat the body up. The higher the progesterone, it creates more heat in the body. And if you're interested in tracking your cycle and really understanding when you ovulate, again, I teach this in Goddess and Rhythm, but just for time's sake, uh, Pre-ovulation, we have lower basal body temperatures. Post-ovulation, we'll have higher. So we can actually pinpoint when we've ovulated. It's pretty amazing. That's how I track my cycle. I've been tracking it for years. So progesterone levels will climb. And if there is an imbalance in progesterone versus estrogen, which is called estrogen dominance, where there's too much estrogen in relation to progesterone, the liver, the body is not metabolizing estrogen well, we'll start to have more symptoms, food cravings, anxiety, irritability, cramping. We may have fibroids, cysts, endometriosis. All of these are grown by excess estrogen. Remember, estrogen's a building hormone. So, but if we have adequate progesterone levels, then we don't feel super bloated, super anxious, a lot of pain when our bleed comes. Instead, we may feel like a little bit of swelling, a little bit of tightness as our uterus prepares to contract. We also might feel a little bit emotional because this is a sacred time of release, not just the, the tissues and the fluids, but also emotional patterns that are no longer serving us. We can actually have a ceremony around this and express our emotions, the wild feminine that comes up during this time of the month. But we shouldn't feel pain. That, that is an outdated paradigm. We do not need to feel pain and overwhelming food cravings and anger at this time of the month. 
So that's your blueprint. And this can also relate to the moon cycle. Not all of us are attuned with the new moon and bleeding on the new moon. You know, some of us might be full moon bleeders. Some of us might be waxing half or waning half bleeders. It's all absolutely okay. This to me depends on our creative energy and how our womb is attuning to our energy. It's often said that when we're bleeding on the new moon, we are, our energy, creative energy is focused inward, perhaps healing, cultivating a baby, preparing to conceive. It's a time of inward growth. When our energy, when we're bleeding on the full moon, it said that we are holding space for the new moon bleeders and our energy is extended outward and the creativity that we have, we're ovulating on the new moon and bleeding on the full moon that a lot of the times we're birthing something into the world, like outward that is for a global mission or uh, birthing a creative dream. And, um, my cycle actually fluctuates depending on my creative levels as well as you know am i focusing my energy inward or am i creating something outward as well as whose womb am i attuning to oftentimes when i'm working on creative projects whether i'm chefing for a sister working with her on a retreat or creating a master class with somebody my womb will sync up to that goddess's womb and together we'll share a few cycles to i feel like harmonize and receive information and exchange information. So after I just shared all this, do you know where you're at in your cycle? What season are you in? Are you ovulating? Are you in summer? Are you in your luteal phase in your fall preparing to bleed? Where are you? I would love to just see in the chat a little bit and hear from some of you goddesses what you feel like is going on. And I hope that that was pretty clear. Marta said, coming out of winter shortly and soon into spring. Beautiful. So I love that time of right after winter because oftentimes it's just that stillness. We don't have the surge in estrogen levels yet. So we don't feel like super creative and inspired. This is such a good time to journal and to really get clear. And then as estrogen levels start to rise, we can start to get all these ideas around what we've been journaling about and take um, action on it. Beautiful. So Mar, it, it just says Mar dot, dot, dot. So I'm sorry, I can't see where your whole name is here. But Mar says autumn premenses. Beautiful. Brittany says follicular. Sahara says, I'm pretty sure I'm in the luteal phase. Beautiful. Awesome. So I'm going to welcome you to all continue to share where you think you're at or where you know you're at. And we're going to go further into this blueprint so you can kind of understand where you're at and how you can work with this. All right. So sharing screen again, back to the PowerPoint. So these three topics that I've been talking about today to create more sovereignty in our life by working with our menstrual cycle as a blueprint. So our number one sovereignty breakthrough is relationships and communication. So knowing where we're at in our menstrual cycle can actually help us with our communication and help strengthen our relationships, particularly with those that we're working with in creative projects, as well as our beloved. Because remember, if our beloved is a man and he's not cycling, his hormones are not going to be the same as ours. Men have high testosterone in the morning and then it slows down at night. And we have high testosterone while we're ovulating and our hormones fluctuate in a whole 28 day cycle. So being able to truly know yourself and how you're feeling each month can create a more depth of communication that you can share with your lover so that as you start to approach your luteal phase and you need more introverted time to so you can contract into yourself and be wild in your emotions and prepare to release your uterine lining, that you can ask that ahead of time that while you're like in it and you're feeling pain and then suddenly you snap at him or her, um, you can prevent doing that. I mean, sometimes it happens. We're human. 
but we can understand where we're at in our cycle and be able to communicate it ahead of time. So naturally we're more expressive and more communicative and flowy with words when we're near ovulation, either right before, during, or right after. So like early luteal phase. This time of the month when estrogen's high, testosterone's high, we are normally more expressive. So this is a great time to have in-depth conversations. If we've been having challenges in our relationship around seeing eye to eye, this is a good time for that. As well as if we're wanting to give a speech with our work or we're an entrepreneur and we plan out our schedules, plan your podcasts, plan your writing, plan your conversations around your ovulation time because you're going to be working with your body and your hormones and it'll be in your favor. You'll just naturally feel more expressive. And even more so, the cacao elixir, it helps with opening the heart, the heart chakra, as well as releasing uh, dopamine. So if you're having a really challenging time communicating with somebody you love, perhaps have a cacao ceremony together and share the elixir and express, communicate while you sip on this together. So as goddesses in modern day society, there is, um, this is going into some of the priestess wounds. I'll just touch on this. Um, but there were time periods where we were burnt at the stake for speaking our truth, for being in our wise women medicine ways with herbalism, with dancing naked with the moon. Um, also, there were times that our temples were destroyed in the um, in ancient Egypt and in Avalon. So this is encoded in our, in our womb consciousness, the collective feminine consciousness. So as we go to express our truth and desires, sometimes we can experience this throat lock that if we speak our truth, we will be burned at the stake maybe not burned at the stake, but outcasted or, you know, yeah, basically outcasted. So it can be a challenge to speak our truth. And so planning your um, communications around your ovulation time can be powerful, as well as speaking to your beloved, um, sharing with them what's going on with your menstrual cycle. So when you are in, um, you know, pre luteal phase share, you know, in this many days, you could even write it on your calendar. This is when I'm going to be starting to enter my bleed. And I probably am not going to want to go out to a lot of social engagements. Maybe you do, you know, but if you know that you need that space in the time of your month to process, let your beloved know ahead of time and communicate that, you know, saying how you're feeling and open the opportunity for them to work with you. Maybe you want to exchange massages at that time of the month. I have a whole article on my website, Modern Goddess Lifestyle, that says, can your, can your menstrual cycle strengthen your relationship? And I give rituals and communication tips and certain ways that we want to feel touched all throughout the menstrual cycle in that article that we can share with our beloved. So I invite you to check that out if you're wanting to learn how to communicate yourself more to your beloved and invite your beloved into your rhythm and your flow. So as you get closer to your please make space phase, all this fire and anger doesn't come up and get directed at them. That instead they already know what's going on. And so you can work together. And so I just love this idea of sovereignty because I, I truly feel that in relationships, we can't, we're not responsible for our beloved's actions. We're not responsible fully for our children's actions. We're not fully responsible. We can't take responsibility for everybody else's journey. We have to only take responsibility for our own. This is doing the soul work asking ourselves, why is this relationship triggering me? What is it about this relationship that's bothering me? And because there's a trigger there, what do I, what can I learn? How is this medicine for, for me? How is this an opportunity for me to see myself and look within of why I'm feeling triggered? So I feel that the more we release the expectations of having another person be a certain way, um, and come more within and asking ourselves, why are we feeling this way? And what are we to learn? That helps us step into sovereignty because now we're taking personal responsibility for how we're showing up, how we're thinking, how we're communicating, what actions we're taking. And also to, to look at when we start to say yes, because we want to be liked or we, um, 
you know, we're, we're doing things out of obligation. We're doing things because there's expectations from others and we want to meet those expectations and fearing that that other person might not like us anymore. We might be outcasted. We have to really look at when we're operating from that space versus tuning inward and fully feeling our yeses, being our authentic self, showing up as the real you in the world. That's deep work. And knowing how we're feeling in our menstrual cycle, we can work with that. Um, Because perhaps we need more inner time in our luteal phase to really dive into what emotions are coming up. Where am I feeling fear in my life? Where am I feeling shame or guilt or frustration? That comes up during the luteal phase. I believe that this is a sacred time of the month to see what patterns are not serving us because whatever we're not expressing and fully understanding that is connected to our sacral chakra and it can get stuck there. That energy can get stagnant and then our womb starts to express it through pain and through symptoms. So as we're starting to release and shed, prepare to shed the uterine lining, those old emotional layers that may have been repressed start to come to the surface. And if we take the time to listen to them and receive the messages, then we can, um, we can learn a lot about ourselves and take personal responsibility for how we're showing up in our relationships. Cause remember we can't control other people and we can't, we're not responsible for other people's choices and decisions in life. We're only responsible for ours and coming into understanding what's our yeses, what's our no's and being clear with that. So then when we're around others and we're communicating, we can be clear with what's our truth versus what is everybody else's truth. It's powerful soul work. So with the sex hormones in, so perhaps you're a mom and you have children, you can work with your menstrual cycle um, to connect with your children, to connect with your daughter. Maybe you and your daughter have your wombs attuned. And so maybe around ovulation phase, you plan to do something, a mother-daughter connection um, where you're both expressive and expressing yourself together. Uh, When you go into your luteal phase, perhaps, um, you know, you do some self-care together. So, and then also as a mom who may not be cycling with a, a child, you know, maybe you have sons to know that it's important to let your family know that around this time of your month, this is mama's self-care time. And in a way that, um, helps everyone understand, um, the sacredness of relaxing and loving yourself and include them to self-care and love themselves in this, in this period of time, because we teach others how to treat us by the way we treat ourselves. If we're feeling guilty for wanting to take that time and we feel like we're being a bad mom because we're making space for us, like a massage or a bath or playing music or whatnot. Um, if we feel guilty or shameful, then that energy floods out into the way we're speaking and the way we're communicating to others. So how we phrase it, this is mama's self-care time. Come want to do this self-care with me. We can teach our children this blueprint so that as they grow, they understand the menstrual cycle. And if it is your son that you're teaching, then he's going to understand this to share with his beloved or the women in his life. So we, we teach others how we want to be treated and we teach others by, by actually living this truth, by them witnessing us in this process. So sovereignty breakthrough number two, work schedule. So the stress, the overcommitted schedule, not being able to fulfill our commitments because we have too many, and then we feel burned out and exhausted and fatigued. So we can work with the menstrual cycle to plan our schedule. When you are in your ovulatory phase and estrogen's high and testosterone's high and your communication's on point, If you feel so alive and vibrant at this time and start to put all this stuff on your schedule for a week and a half later to two weeks later, because you feel alive and energized now, you're going to feel different in a week, in two weeks from then. And then as you start to get closer to your bleed, you're going to be like, why is all this stuff on my schedule? I'm contracting. I want space. So working with your menstrual cycle, knowing that it's great to initiate new things, new ideas, put new stuff on your schedule as you come out of your bleed, have a lot of engagements, community connections, um, times to communicate around your ovulatory phase, 
And then as you get closer to your bleed, start to take things off. You know, if somebody asks you to do something, really check in with your schedule and like really know how much you can maybe commit at that time. And then if you can postpone it to a time after your cycle, or if you really do want to commit to it, see how it works with the other things that you're committed to. Look at your menstrual cycle and look at your schedule when you're planning things and see if they align. That's so important. Because if we're going, going, going all the time, we're going to be firing stress hormones because we need cortisol to be able to handle stresses that are in front of us, deadlines that we feel pressure to make, you know, rushing around all the time. So what's going to happen? It's called the pregnenolone steel. Pregnenolone, which is made from, from cholesterol, pregnenolone makes all the hormones. And stress is always going to steal that pregnenolone and that pregnenolone is going to be made into cortisol, adrenaline, because stress response to life is our number one function. Our thyroid and our sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone levels, they're not going to get the attention they need because pregnenolone is being stolen to make more stress. So if our lives are fast paced, busy, and we don't take time to, to be in a more nurturing, receptive, relaxed state while we're bleeding, we don't work with our schedule, our, our blueprint, then we can have these demands that are constantly pregnenolones being stolen to make stress hormones. And then we get low progesterone, high estrogen, hypothyroidism, low thyroid hormone. So this is essential. This is essential. And I have this three-legged stool here, this photo, because one leg is stress, one leg is thyroid, one leg is the sex hormones. And the stress leg is always going to be the most important. And they all impact each other. If the thyroid's off, the stress horm the sex hormones are going to be off. If, if stress is off and, and you know so much energy is being put into our stress, the sex hormones, the thyroid is going to be off. They all work together synergistically, but stress is the most important. So I wanted to share Priestess Jamie's story. So this amazing goddess took um, Goddess in Rhythm last year. She is a musician. She, is, she holds sacred ceremonies, red tents, and she has an online business of holding space for sisters and guiding them on retreats to Avalon. Amazing. And because she is a busy entrepreneur and has a lot of energy that she focuses on, um, on uh, her work, I, think I just got a question. I'll bring, I'll bring up comments towards the end. There'll be a place to share in a little bit. In a little bit. Um, because she's a busy entrepreneur, she's working her creative magic and, and making all these beautiful things happen into the world. She's got a lot she's focusing on on a daily basis. She has a lot she's holding space for. So with Jamie, she was having experiences of high cortisol, which eventually dropped into low cortisol because she was experiencing burnout and exhaustion. So she was going to coffee and to lots of foods of carbohydrate that have that are carbohydrates because they break down into sugar giving us quick energy so she was going to coffee and carbohydrates to give her the energy she needed in order to meet the demands of her busy schedule but what ended up happening was that caused even more burned out so she'd wake up in the morning just feeling exhausted and she couldn't shake it so when she took Goddess in Rhythm, she, this is what she said, I used to drink a lot of caffeine and eat sugar because my body was needing support, which could cause me to crash more, which would cause me to crash more. I'm very Vata, which in Ayurveda, that's the energy of air and ether. And I have tons of energy and I feel totally wiped out. I learned the way I was eating was contradicting what I should be doing to support my system. Really understanding the four phases of our cycles and eating for these phases gave me a foundation. So Jamie and I got to work closely together around how to support um, high stressful lifestyles, what type of food helps to nourish that, and how to shift from um, being addicted to carbohydrates, what instead we could eat that is still pleasurable, as well as how to let go of coffee and be um, experiencing these elixirs and things in replacement that still give us a boost of energy, but not the crash later. Because coffee can actually spike cortisol which spikes insulin and insulin impacts our blood sugar. So an hour or two later, if you drink coffee and then you feel a crash, tired, you need another cup or even hungry, that could be a sign of blood sugar imbalances.
So here's a normal cortisol curve. We should have high cortisol in the morning, should be lower at night. But what can happen is our cortisol can be off and we can have low cortisol in the morning and we can actually get a boost of it at night and feel wired but tired and then have insomnia. That's actually what happened to me when I was working at the restaurant that I helped open. I was up at five, worked all day, exhausted, but then when I tried to go to bed, I couldn't fall asleep till 12 in the morning and then I had to get up and do it over again. This is our cortisol levels. So Jamie worked to eat with the menstrual cycle, the four seasons that we go through and the foods that help to nourish them. And I have some cooking videos on my YouTube. If you want to deeper check this out, that's available for you. And we really focused on how to support the stress system with foods that are full of protein, healthy fats that are going to help to nourish the body, slow down the blood sugar spikes. And so we focused on a lot of greens that have chromium in it. That's great for blood sugar balance, as well as um, Jamie does plants mostly for her diet um, instead of animal protein. So we focused on um, a lot of plant-based protein. And so that was some keys for her. These are also recipes that are in my Moon Cycle E cookbook that was in the Goddess and Rhythm course that's in it. So also lastly, thinking about our schedule as an entrepreneur or as a mother who's got so many roles or, you know, if you're just a busy, powerful goddess is to leave room for spontaneity. This is something that I have come to love and adore so deeply is I create time on my schedule that's just space. And when I get to that time, I can do whatever I want, whether I want to go to a yoga class or dance naked in my bedroom or go on a hike or even work on my business. It is time for me to do whatever I want. Because in a society where we are so busy all the time, like I need to be at this appointment, I need to do this and I need... It's so good to feel freedom and to be able to have space on your schedule that is devoted just for you. And scheduling this right before your menstrual cycle, your bleed comes, can be powerful. Um, then you can feel that you have freedom to flow with however you need to emotionally express yourself. And having this sacred container once a week, I feel is vital and necessary to my wild feminine who doesn't want to be restricted in, in a tight schedule. So sovereignty breakthrough number three. This is our last one. This is our food cravings and emotional eating. And we're going to have our little ceremony in just a bit, but this is important. The cravings that we get can totally, totally be related to estrogen and progesterone imbalances. If we've been going, 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 and we're so stressed and stress hormones are being made and progesterone is not we're gonna have low progesterone levels in our luteal phase and high estrogen levels. Anytime there's low progesterone, estrogen can, can fill the receptor sites and um, we may not be feeling the calming effects, the grounding effects of progesterone. So what can happen is um, we can feel a lot of anxiety and that can cause us to emotionally go to food which can give us a dopamine release, you know, if we're eating sugar or something that makes us feel good, but then later we can crash and then we can have that cycle repeat. Also, progesterone requires more amino acids to build it. We need more protein at this time of the month. If we're not getting enough protein, if we're eating a vegetarian vegan diet and we're not getting enough plant-based protein and we're eating too many carbohydrates, which I did that for a period of time and it, it crashed me. Um, we need to be making sure we're asking ourselves every meal, where's my healthy fat? Where's my healthy, pro my clean protein coming from? And this is because progesterone requires more amino acids to build it as well as progesterone causes us to burn more calories too. So metabolically we burn 200 to 300 more calories at this time of the month. So if you just feel more hungry, that's totally normal. It just depends what we're eating, you know, having a complex carbohydrate like sweet potatoes dipped in like an avocado sauce, which is our healthy fat that maybe we whipped up in the, the Vitamix blender. That's something I love to do. Um, 
that is going to be filling and give us those healthy fats to slow down our blood sugar um, spikes that we might get at this time if we're not eating enough healthy fat protein and complex carbohydrates and if we're going to like the donuts and the cake and all the things that our cravings are asking for so being aware of this time of the month we need that healthy fat clean protein um, as well as a bit more food and complex carbohydrates. So it's like, where are we getting our calories from? You know, where are we, um, you know, is this food going to sustain me long term or am I going to get quick fuel and then crash later? We really want to be asking ourselves this after we finish ovulating. And then also our gut microbiome. So if we're feeling mental, not mental clear and we've got a lot of brain fog or we feel depressed and moody, this is because our gut microbiome, 94% of serotonin is made here. And if we're eating a lot of sugary foods or carbohydrates that break down into sugar, or we're eating foods that may we may be sensitive to, it can cause inflammation in our gut, which impacts the brain. Anytime there's inflammation here, we're going to have slow thinking here, as well as perhaps moodiness, and because serotonin is made here. Plus, whatever we feed our body, there's the microbiome, the little bugs that live in our gut. So whether, you know, so there's the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, the pathogenics. The pathogenic ones are going to feed off of the sugar and the processed food and the chemicals, and then they're going to multiply and grow, and then they're going to crave and ask for more of the same. So we, it's literally not an emotion anymore that we're feeling. It's literally the the bugs in our in our gut that are saying give me more of that food so it's pretty powerful stuff what we are feeding our ecosystem um, we want to be mindful of that and there is a direct link of endometriosis and candida and candida is the yeast that grows in our body and it's fed by sugar and if there's more inflammation in our body we may have menstrual cramps um, and it can cause hormonal imbalance as well. It can impact our high, our testosterone levels, which can cause PCOS, our estrogen levels, our thyroid. So this is big stuff. Oops, didn't mean to go back. I'm just checking questions real quick. Marta asks, what can you do if you're in during your luteal and menstrual phase, you have to work a lot or are busy and you can't reschedule? Um, I might have already answered that, but what I'd like to say is um, take pauses throughout the day. You know, if you have to meet a busy schedule, take pauses when you can, take deep breaths, check in with yourself, listen to your womb, and Notice if you're just still taking on too much because at that time when we feel overwhelmed, we may not feel clear and we may have harder times creating boundaries and saying no. So we might even take on more. And then also stock up your kitchen with food, healthy, nourishing, protein, um, healthy fat food and have that available in your fridge or have it available in your pantry because that's your foundation if your schedule is super busy that can that can nourish you um so that's what i would suggest so dia dia's heavy um periods return to normal so when i worked with dia in um goddess in rhythm and she is this amazing traveling ceremonialist she's sitting on a bunch of cacao this is actually what it looks like and then there's little pods with the cacao um the flesh of the fruit which is a very thin layer and then the beans the cacao pods and then that's how cacao paste is made uh she leads cacao ceremonies all over the world she's um such an inspiration to me. And she was experiencing crazy food cravings, heavy periods. This is a sign of low progesterone. So she learned that about her symptoms, what they meant, and she felt her progesterone's coming to a better state because her periods got less heavy and things have more have been in more sync since then. Also, the recipe in the food that she ate during Goddess and Rhythm helped her to know what to eat before bleeding and after it and calm her food cravings. So she really got to prepare her, her body um, ahead of time knowing like, okay, my bleed's coming on. I'm going to be having cravings. What foods do I prepare myself with and stock up with now so that as I go into that time, I have a foundation. I have a plan. So she really got to work. She got excited because she, she says she's a foodie. She's obsessed with food. So being able to actually go into food and 
um, work with it and not feel like food had control over her was really powerful. So it was so wonderful to support her. So I just wanted to give you a few tips for the luteal phase because this is the inner autumn. This is all about contracting, grounding energy. So eating foods that grow underneath the earth have a grounding energetic component to them. So we can think of terms in terms of root vegetables, adding more root vegetables, which are complex carbohydrates into our diet. Also adding cruciferous vegetables, which a lot of them also are roots. Um, so and we can eat cabbage, and rutabaga, also cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale. These are all cruciferous vegetables. And these help our liver break down and metabolize ex excess estrogen properly so that we don't have an imbalance of estrogen and progesterone. So that is powerful. Also anti-inflammatory foods, turmeric root, ginger, all the chai spices like cloves, really powerful at this time, as well as there's certain herbs you can do too as well. I really love white willow bark. So here's some more recipes in Goddess in Rhythm um, in the Moon Cycle e-cookbook. This is a sweet potato, or you can make it with pumpkin smoothie that is awesome to have uh, during your luteal phase. So we shift from more of like the berries that we want in our summer, our ovulatory phase. And then when we're in luteal, we can make a sweet potato smoothie. So we've got that complex carb carbohydrate as well as that grounding root vegetable from the sweet potatoes. So how, so I see there's some comments. I'm going to get to the comments at the end of this. Um, so how the birth control contraceptive affects the menstrual cycle. So this is one more thing I really want to tap in with you all is that when you are on the pill or you are taking some kind of, if you have like a shot or the patch or the marina uh, IUD, that this gives your body hormones and you are not actually having a real menstrual flow. When you bleed, that's not actually a bleed that comes from ovulating. Because when we're taking contraceptive or any kind of synthetic hormones, it suppresses ovulation. That egg is not released from the follicle and we don't essentially go through summer and then luteal phase. And then the bleed is brought on because we stop taking hormones, we take the sugar pills and then the bleed comes on. So the pill does not have progesterone. It has synthetic estrogen as well as progestin, which is a hormone that is, it's a, a synthetic version of progesterone that doesn't always show up in the body as progesterone. Sometimes it can, can be converted back into estrogen. So what can happen when we are on the pill long-term, and I was one of those people, is that it can cause our estrogen levels to get wonky when we stop taking the pill. It can cause us to have too low estrogen and then too high estrogen. And, um, yeah, so I just wanted to let you know, and again, there's there's no shame if this is your experience right now, but I wanted to let you know that um, your body is not actually releasing an egg and that this luteal phase is not happening, so your body never gets the chance to make its own progesterone, and unfortunately, that's what happened to me is I had very deficient levels of progesterone when I got off the pill, and first I had, I had estrogen dominance, but I had low estrogen and even lower progesterone, and then as my body was trying to regulate, then I got high estrogen and still low progesterone. So the pill can, can, can mess with hormone levels. It can affect the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus communication with the ovaries. And it can affect the microbiome, our gut lining, and how well we are absorbing micronutrients. Hormone balance is all about micronutrients. Do we have the right minerals and vitamins to help build certain hormones? And unfortunately, the pill can make us depleted in magnesium and zinc and B vitamins, which affect our libido, our energy level, our hormone balance, um, and our happiness. So um, I wanted to share the story about Robin. She wanted to release the birth control pill, which is why she took Goddess in Rhythm. And when she did this, she found the confidence because she was on the pill in the first place because she didn't want to get pregnant. When she learned when her fertility window is, which is when we're ovulating, and then after we ovulate, we can't get pregnant because the egg is either you know, fertilized or it dies. When she learned about her rhythm, that gave her a lot of freedom and understanding of her sexuality. And so she was able to release the birth control pill. 
So some post pill care, um, if this is something you're thinking about, B vitamins are really important to bring into our um, diet. So um, nuts and seeds, whole grains, nutritional yeast has B vitamins, you know, any of the meats, organ meats, this is going to give us B vitamins and that B vitamins help with our mood and our energy, as well as I love seed cycling. Um, so seed cycling is, it's, is a concept of working with certain seeds that have phytoestrogens and um, seeds that help to nourish different hormones. And when we do, when we do this process, we want to have flax seed and pumpkin seed pre-ovulation. So again, it's important to know where you're at and sesame and sunflower seeds post ovulation and be eating about two tablespoons of these daily. And these seeds can help to bring our body into balance. And if you don't have a normal cycle right now, you can start this with the moon and, you know, pretend that your pre ovulation is during the new moon building up into waxing and then post ovulation is waning into full or sorry, waning back into new. And also we can connect to the menstrual cycle. So, or sorry, we can connect to the moon cycle. So if you're not um, having a normal cycle or if you are on the birth control pill and you want to feel connected to this greater cycle that's going on, go outside every night for five minutes and connect with the moon. Her glow can impact our, our melatonin levels. So we have healthy sleep. Um, just having that connection with her rhythm is so important because we're constantly affected by all this artificial lighting that can throw us off our rhythm, our circadian rhythm. And in Goddess and Rhythm, I have a post pill care guide. So this tells about how to bring your cycle back into balance naturally if you're releasing the pill. And so lastly, I was talking about this concept earlier about um, processing our, our wild emotions and our please make space phase. Our womb wants to share something with us each month. And the more that we don't listen to these sacred hidden messages that get to come up and be released and processed, we may have louder symptoms. This is based on the work of Louise Hay and Christian Northrup that imbalances in the sacral chakra of unrepressed of unexpressed emotions and trauma can lead to a further imbalance with hormones. So it's so important to listen to our womb, to make space doing our womb breaths, um, which I'm gonna have you tune into your body while we do our elixir ceremony. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get into questions in just a second. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a peek at the questions now and then we'll go into our ceremony. Um, Lulu just said, I can't hear. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Let me know if you can hear me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. So we're going to go back into our slides. Actually, what I'd like for you to do is if you have a few sips left of your elixir, <sighs> We're going to do a ritual, a ceremony on releasing attachments to food, to the emotional need to um, connect with our food and to release our troubles in our food. Because as we learned, you know, food cravings can come on because of our hormones and taking on too much in life. But food cravings can also come on due to not making space to process our emotions. So we're going to do a little ritual to tune into our emotions. So I'd love for you to take your elixir, hold it to your heart, and maybe if you feel called to place one hand over your womb. And just as we develop relationships by investing time with communication and listening, we can do that with listening to our womb, our sacral chakra. So just tuning into this area of our body this powerful, potent cauldron that helps to nurture and birth ideas, that helps activate our creative, fertile energy. And with your elixir connected to your, how, your heart, I'd love for you to take a few deep breaths in. Exhale. Just releasing everything that we talked about today just for a moment so you can truly go within and hear yourself be with yourself feel this depth of presence with yourself and your soul 
And I'd love for you to reflect on this question. Has there been a current craving in your life around food and a particular emotional pattern that you've been experiencing? So I'd love for you to connect with that feeling of feeling stuck with food or having a craving with food or feeling stuck in life or feeling like you're in a cage. Just allow yourself to tune into that. And if you have a particular memory or emotion that comes up, tune into that. Where in your life do you feel caged? Where are you seeing yourself rely on food to help you as an ally? Just allow yourself to see that, see yourself clearly, see what that pattern is. Now I'd like to see, I'd like for you to see that pattern as actually one of your biggest gifts that it has a message for you to kind of flip the feelings of maybe shame or fear or anxiety and come into this understanding that this pattern, these cravings, these emotional expressions with food, there's a message in here. There's a gift. So as you tune into that frequency of understanding this as a gift, now we're going to create space. So we're gonna work with the elements. I would like for you to feel fully in your body temple and as the queen of your queendom, perhaps if you need to connect with the element of fire to release this attachment, to release this cord, this pattern. You can draw forth the element of fire or perhaps imagine yourself holding a sword, creating space in your life by burning up what is not serving you, by using your sword to release anything, create boundaries. Perhaps you want more lightness in your life, more laughter. So you can imagine yourself using the element of wind. Perhaps imagine yourself with a feather tickling yourself, maybe even tickle yourself with your hair and allow that laughter, that lightness to release the attachment, create space in your body. Or maybe you need grounding energy of earth. So allow yourself to take an inhale and exhale, fold into Mama Gaia, feeling the earth below you, holding you, nourishing you. It is not all up to you. Or maybe you wanna to connect to the element of water and imagine a waterfall flowing over you, cleansing you, releasing you of that attachment to that particular pattern. We're releasing our attachment, we're creating space, we are letting go. And now once we've been creating space, again, Tune into your sovereignty, what that means to you to be in your radiant power. Remember, sovereignty and freedom can come with great responsibility. And in this responsibility, we are showing up to fully be the queen of our queendom, be the creatrix by rewriting our story. So we want to look at that pattern, that aspect of ourself that needed love that needed attention, that perhaps needed space, more space on our schedule, perhaps needed to cry, whatever that pattern is, allow yourself to hold it, to love it. And now we're gonna shift it by rewriting our story. How do you want to nurture that pattern, that emotion, that need for expression? What do you want to do in your life to create the feeling of love and abundance and freedom and pleasure? So see yourself taking those steps. Maybe it looks like taking something off your schedule this week, grabbing your planner at the end of the ceremony and taking something off, creating that leisurely time to, to be and to flow. Maybe it looks like going to the grocery store and stocking your fridge up Maybe you're entering into your luteal phase soon and you want to feel grounded. Or maybe you're ready to have a challenging conversation and you're getting close to your ovulation and you know that it's time to express yourself. 
See yourself taking those steps. See yourself living it and commit to yourself that that is your medicine, that when you go into these patterns, that when you clearly look at yourself and love yourself and invoke the elements to help release the attachment to create space, that you can rewrite your story in any moment as a sovereign creatrix, you can change your reality by changing how you're thinking and where you're placing your energy, how you're taking action. So let's inhale together, exhale, and then holding your sacred elixir, we're gonna take a sip to seal in this commitment to ourself and we are going to allow our full senses the sense of taste to receive this pleasure because that's what food is right it's nourishment and it's pleasure and why shouldn't we feel it we live in a world that is so restricted sometimes and the more that we fear food and restrict ourselves the more that we come back to food as a dependency even stronger so let us let us fully engage all of our senses in this present moment and receive this nourishment, give ourselves permission to receive this pleasure. So sealing our sovereignty story, taking a sip. Woohoo! <laughs> so I'd love to hear from anyone who wants to share how they're rewriting their story how are they shifting that reality from stuck in your pattern to where do you need to love yourself more and how are you going to do that how are you going to take action we would love to hear um and again please feel free to share from your heart vulnerably whatever is coming up because this is a safe sisterhood space and as we're witnessed we can be free as we see ourselves clearly and process then we can be free as we share ourselves with others and not hide and put on a mask to hide even further we can free ourselves so i'd love to hear what you all have to say lulu says thank you so much ali oh great lulu i'm glad that you could start hearing the webinar again i'm glad the sound was coming through for you mary says taking space to slow down and open up my schedule yes powerful Mm. beautiful if anyone else is still typing i'm going to give you a couple a little bit more time um it's definitely important in every and <laughs> i have elixir on my my mouth in any mo every moment it's important to ask ourselves how do we want to show up how are we taking ownership how are we releasing being the victim and taking ownership over our lives by choosing where we want to place our energy, by choosing the actions that we're putting, um, that we're taking in our life and working with our cycle to plan for that. So Brittany says, unconditional self-love, feeling called to do some mirror gazing later today. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Marta says, meal prep and joy in the kitchen instead of being hangry or overeating. Totally, right? It's all about creating that foundation. We want to create the root structure and that creates the energy of the rooted feminine. When we are prepared and working with our cycle, then we can take on more because when we show up in our commitments with our full self, rather than feeling hangry or exhausted, and we're really making stuff happen. Lulu says the realization of how much of my power I've been giving away and then feel resentment and frustration. But now I realize how I can really create all that myself. Yes, babe, we have that power. Absolutely. Being able to be clear of our thoughts and our reality and really um, be clear about where we want to place our attention and being with our emotional process too, accepting ourselves as we are and being with those emotional flows, not, not making, sorry, not over fully filling our schedule so we don't have time to be with ourselves. We want to make that space to really see ourselves and be with ourselves because that's where our power is. The wild feminine is powerful. When we are fierce and we feel our emotions, we let them express in healthy ways that's where the space is cleared. And then we can have those aha moments, those epiphanies that come through. 
So Lulu really appreciates the webinar. Sahara says, I took a week and a half off to work to, of work starting yesterday to take time for myself. My priorities are spending time in nature and connecting to my inner goddess, taking responsibility for my life to get out of victimhood, fasting today with prayer and meditation. That is so beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so thank you all for sharing. And if there's more that wants to come through, please feel free to write in the chat box. And so lastly, we have <laughs> this this um, prize that I'm going to mail to one of you. And there's a way that I'm going to share that you can win it. Um, and this is also, you can go onto my website and find the cacao elixir for your sensual bliss. You can click medicinal foods. You can find it there. Um, and one of you is going to win this today. So before we get into that, I did want to say if anyone is feeling called to dive deeper into learning about the specific foods for your menstrual cycle, as well as rituals, goddess archetypes, Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, workout routines, sexual energy and connection, and how to work with the blueprint of your menstrual cycle and be very rooted in that. Um, I'm offering the Goddess in Rhythm program. I want to share this with you because this is a celebration. This is part of my life's dharma, my heart's art. Um, an early bird special does end tonight, midnight, and we begin on the new moon in Taurus. So that's May 4th. So temple doors are open. This is Goddess in Rhythm. And we are going to be working with the moon cycle. We are going to be starting on the new moon in Taurus and ending on the new moon in Gemini. And we're going to be meeting on the waxing half, the full moon, the waning half, and then on the new moon again. So we're going to be working with the lunar phases all together in a red tent sisterhood style. So this is a webinar. This is a Zoom platform that I'm on right now. But in my group coaching programs, we get to work through Zoom, but we have a private sisterhood where we can have our cameras on if we feel like it and actually share and speak and process and describe what's going on as we flow through our cycle together. So this is the inline uh, inside. This is inside our temple space. This is the um, the the temple of moonstrol wisdom. I call it, and we will have a live weekly video each week that we get to join and share some reflections and meditations and Q and A, as well as we'll have a transmission each week on the menstrual cycle that I want you to watch to learn about that phase that you're in, and then we'll come together and share in our live video. You also get a moon cycle e-cookbook with recipes to eat through your cycle, the post pill care guide that I was, that I showed you earlier. And then three cooking videos from me, plus one of them is going to be live and I'm going to ask everybody what they want to learn. And depending on the group, um, I will share something specific to the group's taste buds. And then you get transmissions, meditations, workout videos from nine menstrual experts. This is the Moon Cycle e-cookbook. This has helped a lot of women with eating for their menstrual cycle. Um, this is the way that I usually eat. Um, I, um, yeah, I've built upon these concepts over time to help include thyroid support and support for PCOS and things like that, which that's also added into the course as well. So if you have a specific hormonal um, imbalance, I share information on that as well. And this year I've added a moon, a moonstration expert vault. So uh, there are interviews by all these different menstrual health experts um, that is available for you as well to dive deeper into these concepts. <sighs> Also, my friend Caitlin, who is a naturopathic doctor, goes deeper into understanding um, natural birth control methods. So if you do want to get off a hormonal contraceptive, we talk about that. We talk about the blood mysteries with Priestess Laura, which is actually the ritual and the magic of our menstrual blood and offerings, rituals, um, experiences, how to connect with your blood in a sacred way. We dive deep into that and the blood codes. And so who this is for, anyone who has period pain, PMS symptoms, bloating, blemishes, fatigue, crazy food cravings, breast tenderness, irritability, um, thyroid issues. Thyroid regulates um, metabolism and temperature. So if, if there's a lot of weight gain or you're cold all the time, that could be thyroid. Estrogen dominance issues like fibroid cysts and endometriosis, low libido, high stress. 
or for anyone who just wants to dive into understanding their menstrual cycle and get really rooted so that as they build their business or create their gifts in the world, that they have a blueprint that they're clearly working with. Um, and so health coaches oftentimes come into this container, creatives, intuitive women who want to flow with the moon. And for anyone who wants to be seen in your emotional ebbs and flows and have a sisterhood to process the wild feminine, the shadow side that comes up around our menstrual flow and to really dive into celebrating that together and being received and witnessed in your true, vulnerable, authentic self. So here's our live schedule. We start on the new moon in Taurus. This is all on my website, so you can check it out there. And why invest in yourself, goddess? You know, if you're a mother and you want to share this wisdom with your daughter, no way better than actually embodying it so that they can live it with you and see you doing it. Um, as well as, you know, if you do resonate with somebody who had any of those experiences that I just listed, those symptoms, and you burn yourself out, this is to understand your body to work with it. So what is the value? I want to share with you the, the investment here. So this course is valued at $999, but I'm not going to charge you that. And the course um, is listed at $399. However, we're in early bird today and tonight. So your total cost is $300. And we have a hella awesome payment plan. So that looks at four payments of $86. So every other week. So if you need a payment plan, I got you. That's $43 a week, which is crazy. That's amazing, you know? And if you're having challenges with food cravings and you're going out to buy coffee and sugary sweets, just instead of doing that, dive into this course and learn how to support your body. And then you can save money that way in your budget. There's also a VIP program where you get everything I just shared, plus you get a one-on-one -on -one hour and a half long session with me where I develop you a personal protocol for your hormonal needs. So a coaching um, program with me is $1,500 to do private mentoring. But our VIP is valued at $549. And we're an early bird, so your total is $448. And again, we have a hella awesome payment plan. So 123 for payments, that's bi-weekly. And so that would be $61 a week. So pretty rad. And the payment plan is just set up automatically. When you put in your card, it takes it out automatically every other week. So you don't even have to think about it. And if you're already a member, you're welcome to join in us with us as always at 147. And if you're joining at that cost, you get a session with me. Um, so welcoming previous mem members, of course. So yeah, this is, Alana says, Goddess in Rhythm is raising the vibration to changing lives. She felt that I was helpful than her OBGYN because I helped her see where the root of her hormone issues were coming from didn't just offer her the birth control pill, which is unfortunately is what so many of us is, are going through. So in order to <laughs> win your womb herbs, what I'd like for you to do is to type in this link right here. So last time I did a webinar like this and I gave a um, prize, I didn't give people enough time. So if you're on your phone or if you're on your computer, type in this link. <laughs> and, I, and I will I'll pause for a second so you can do that. Um, I get kind of excited and hyped up. So um, I understand that being in the rooted feminine allows their space. So type in this link. All right. Giving you 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two. One. All right. So once you've typed in that link, what I'd like for you to do, I'm actually going to bring it up too. When you go to my website, you'll find that link. Um, am I still, hang on, let me share this screen real quick. Uh, when you go to my website, moderngoddesslifestyle.com, you'll find that link under course right here. So that's another way that you can find this. So what I'd like for you to do is to scroll down and look at week four. When you find week four, and there'll be a little symbol by it that says week four, I want you to type in the chat box what phase we're in on week four, what you'll be learning. 
I'm giving a little tease. I'm giving you a little tease. Maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. All right, so I'm starting to see. All right, so Marta, <laughs> you got it. Inner autumn. So that is correct. It is the luteal phase. So Marta saw it first. So my dear, I am going to mail you these womb herbs. So please send me your address and congratulations. And everybody else, you're winners too. I love you so deeply. So we're all winners, of course. And lastly, I just want to share with you all that mm -mm, I have a private Facebook group that all are welcome to join into. It's Modern Goddess Lifestyle. If you're not a part of there, we continue the conversation all the time. And if anyone is on the fence about if this program is right for you right now, you can set up a clarity call with me and I will get on the phone with you today or early tomorrow and we can talk about is this right for you. So if you want to set up a 20 minute clarity call, there is a Calendly link here and we can, or just message me on Facebook or email. And then lastly, I just wanna open up this space for any other questions that you might have. So for all of you who are still present, um, I also just wanna honor you. What questions do you have from today's webinar? How are you feeling? Do you have more clarity around your menstrual cycle? Did you enjoy the rest of your elixir? Um, this rest of our, um, webinar today is to just hear from you. How are you feeling? What are your questions? And if you have any questions about Goddess and Rhythm, also I'd like to answer them here. But if you have any deeper personal questions about the webinar flow, um, about the Goddess and Rhythm program, then we can set up a one-on-one -on -one call together. And remember that early bird special does end tonight. And this is one, this is um, a yearly course that I offer. I offer it once a year. So if you're ready to dive into it, um, this is when I offer it. And I figured to do it now before we start getting into the summer months in case you're traveling and you got a lot going on. I also have this going online too. So I'm going to check. Um, wow, there's a lot of comments in the online space. <laughs> Hi, everybody online, FYI on Facebook. Um, I. Uh, I invited everybody into this online Zoom webinar, so I've been connecting with the comments here in this private Zoom, but there are those of you who are also posting on Facebook, and so I'm just reading some of your comments. Amber is learning about when she is um, menstruating. I will post the link to Goddess and Rhythm in here when I'm done, Amber, so I'll, I'll message you privately too. Okay, so questions. Marta says, wow, thank you. You mentioned carrageen as a filler. What do you think about gel and gum? I haven't heard of gel and gum, but I do know some people who are sensitive to the gum gums. I have a friend who has a particularly um, sensitive digestive system, has leaky gut, which is basically when the um, gut lining cells are, have become inflamed due to a lot of um, inflammatory inflammatory food sensitivities or in the past when we've eaten a lot of foods that are GMO and they have glyphosate in it, which glyphosate, so ge genetically modified foods do not have pesticides like a lot on the plants when they're growing, not, not a ton, but the pesticide itself is inside the, the, um, the DNA of the plant. And it's called glyphosate and glyphosate blows up the stomachs of bugs and that creates the natural pesticide because bugs literally can't, you know, be around those plants and survive. So glyphosate can eventually affect our gut lining. You know, if it's blowing up the, the stomachs of bugs, think about what it's doing to our gut lining. So if we've eaten a, you know, a modern day standard American diet when we were younger, we may have a lot of issues with food sensitivities. And if we have a lot of stress in our life and emotional stress, we may have inflammation in our body. And if we have food cravings, emotional eating, overeating, this can all affect our gut. So there are some people who are allergic to or sensitive to a lot of the gums, like xanthan gum. I know that that one can be 
challenging for some people. So I'm not quite sure what gelum, gelum gum is. Um, but yes, carrageen is a filler and it can cause inflammation for some people. And carrageen is Irish moss, but it's been processed. If you do order Irish moss, like the seaweed, and you're washing it and spongy, and then you're blending it and working with that, that is different than the carrageen they're putting as a filler in the nut milks. So I hope that's helpful, love. Sahara says, when is the best time to fast during your menstrual cycle? That's a really good question. I think it really depends on person and um, your metabolism, your stress levels, your, um, yeah, your stress levels and your schedule. Because if you're one to go, 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 then that is going to require um, a lot of energy to keep up with your schedule. So if you're in your luteal phase and you're fasting, you might feel really exhausted because you need more protein at that time. Um, however, if you give yourself space to fast during that time and really tune inward, um, that, that may be sustainable for you. Also, personally, I've liked to math, uh, I've liked to fast before my, um, my ovulatory phase comes and that's worked for me. However, for those of us who have low estrogen levels and are not getting enough fat in our diet and it's hard for us to keep on weight, fasting pre-ovulation could actually cause lower estrogen levels and it could postpone ovulation because we need high enough estrogen and we need healthy fats to ovulate. So it really depends on your body and your hormones and your your stress your lifestyle um so i would say tune into you and maybe explore maybe try fasting at different times of your cycle and see um where you find the most benefit so i hope that's helpful love and mar will you teach us how to take the internal temperature and to chart out our flow yes absolutely this is something that i use um all the time I have my thermometer in my bed under my pillow. And it's the first thing I do in the morning. It's so, so if you are going to use the fertility method, a uh, fertility awareness method, this is what I teach. And then um, Dr. Caitlin Parkinson teaches the justice method. And she goes into detail of that. Um, both are helpful. Uh, it teaches us how to track our basal body temperature and how to do it properly because there's a lot of ways that we can mess it up and get inaccurate reports of our temperature, as well as it teaches us how to track our cervical fluid and understand its signs, as well as our cervix position. And for me, those three things, as well as the way that I feel like and, and how my cycle has regulated are all indications of when I've ovulated. And then when I see my temperature rise the next day after I'm pretty sure I've ovulated, and then I see that temperature rise, and then I see it continue to rise, then I know that I'm no longer fertile. And it is liberating, it is exciting, but this is something we wanna be doing correctly, because there are some things we could definitely do wrong um, without knowing all the facts of how to do this. Uh, so the fertility awareness method, I do share about this in Goddess and Rhythm, as well as I recommend a book called uh, Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Weschler, spelled W-E-S-C-H-L-E-R, Taking Charge of Your Fertility. All right, so I think we've got all of our questions answered. Checking on Facebook real quick. Okay, I think, I think we got it. Uh, I love you too. So again, thank you all so much for playing with me today. Wow, we went, we definitely went over the time that I had planned, but there was just so much to share with you all. And I love you all deeply. And if you enjoy these types of webinars and free information, then you're welcome to sign up for my newsletter at goddess and um, sorry, modern goddess where I send regular emails you get a womb clearing manual as well as um, recipes. I usually post recipes for hormone balance. So if you wanna stay in tune with more that's coming, feel free to join over there. And if you do feel called to enter into this sacred moon lodge, moon lodge container this month for Goddess in Rhythm, I welcome you, sister. We're here to hold you in whatever process you're going through. This year's theme is sovereignty and self-trust. So we'll be diving deeper into these concepts. And again, if you just have some questions, you're on the fence, there's some questions around time, commitment, um, please message me and we'll set up that one-on-one -on -one time so I can hear what it is that you wanna share. So, all right. 
Thank you all so much and whew, loving you all. Have a beautiful rest of your Saturday. Take care, beauties. Take exquisite care of your body temple. Mwah.